Aloha, it's Kurt and Andy Stan again with another battle report. This time I'm bringing you a 2500 point game between my Dark Elves and an opponent Skaven. This will also be the first time I take advantage of the 50% Lord rule uh, that's now part of the game since the Games Workshop FAQ'd it. And I probably don't take it as seriously as I could have. I, do, I just kind of use it to uh, bring things that I own that I don't usually get to play very often. So I'm bringing my Black Dragon. I'm bringing that 100 point sword that's in the Dark Elf book, the Hydra Blade. And I'm bringing uh, a cool little level 4 wizard running dark and the book of uh, Asher just because I like the idea of a level 6 wizard on the board. Practically that's what it is. So this is what the board looks like before deployment. Um, I think we play just the forest and the river as magical. Everything else is just what it is, normal. And uh, we'll go into deployment starting on the Skaven side. Okay, so starting on the left flank we have the Warp Lightning Cannon, a block of slaves, and then finally the Hell Pit Abomination. Moving on to the center, we have the first block of clan rats. Inside that block will be the gray seer that's not the general, and then the BSB. Attached is a warp fire thrower, and behind them is a uh, warlock engineer. Next to that unit is another block of clan rats. Inside there will be the general gray seer and the chieftain with the, the fell blade, and then attached to that unit will be the mortar. Uh, moving on to here, we'll see another unit of slaves, and then over there on the hill is just another lightning cannon. Alright, so we're going to move over to the Dark Elf deployment. Obviously it's going to be a lot more compacted. Here on the left flank we have my Dark Riders and then a unit of Executioners facing the Abomination. In the center we have my Dread Spears with both the BSB and the Sorceress inside there. Next to that unit is a fairly small unit of Witch, uh, witch Elves. There's only 27 of them, but they do have the Cauldron of Blood attached. And then finally on the center right we have my Cold One Knight Chariots. As we move to the far right of the flank, we can see that I put my dragon out here. He has a 24 or 18 inch command radius, I forget which it is, so he can afford to be on the far right flank. Uh, also, he's probably going to be targeted by all the cannons, and if they deviate, which is the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, of course, is they all hit, but if they deviate, uh, they won't run into other units. You know, they'll, they'll be all or nothing, practically. So when it comes to scouting, uh, my opponent deploys his gutter runners here on the far left flank of my deployment zone facing my dark riders. I go ahead in the vanguard move, move up my dark riders, and he goes into his first turn after winning the roll off. He declares his charge here with the slaves into my dark riders. It's a pretty far charge. I stand and shoot. I may have killed one or two of the slaves, and he fails his charge. After that, he moves into compulsory moves, and his abomination roll is high, as you can see here and he makes it into the Dark Riders, so that's already really bad for me. Next we go into the movement phase. You can see here already on the far right he's shooting up the slaves to intercept some of my units. Uh, his other two units of clan rats just kind of nudge up to get in better positions for later turns. The gutter runners move up to the coast line of this river, and we go into the magic phase. In the magic phase it's pretty close. Uh, he's going to try to get off Skitter Leap first. I know it's going to lead to something terribly tricky, so I'm going to stop that right now. Uh, he's going to use up two of his Warpstone tokens to cast the Dreaded 13th, and it's just going to go crazy. He's going to kill 15 of my Dread Spears, and as you can see, he just devastates his unit by killing three Clan Rats. Uh, after that, we go into the shooting phase, and as you can see here, I'm going to just show you a couple clips of different we uh, War Machines and Weapon Teams that do some wounds here and there. And then at the end of it all, uh, my battle line looks like this. So not terribly bad. After that, we see the, uh, the gutter runners kill, I think, one executioner. We, you can see the combat going back there in the distance between the dark riders and the abomination. 
And of course, the abomination just runs through them. I think I put a uh, two or three wounds though on him, which was really lucky. I think it was two wounds on him, so uh, not too bad for their useless sacrifice. And as you can probably tell from the other picture just now, the Abomination overruns the perfect amount of distance to be out of my charge arc with those Executioners. Otherwise, I look across the board and declare two other charges with the uh, Chariots into the Skaven Slaves, and I easily make that. Alright, and this is what the board looks like pretty much after movement. So as you can see here, I, I don't shoot my dragon down the flank to try to take out those weapons. That's, I feel like that's like a waste of time. And I, I move them towards what I consider the meat of the army, which you need to defeat to basically win the game. So that's what I'm doing. I, of course, set up this uh, position right here where if he shoots his warp lightning cannons at my chariots or at my dragon, he can easily just shift around and kill multiple things at once if he gets lucky. So it's not a, it's not a great thing, but you gotta, you gotta, like I've said before in other, my other battle reports with Skaven, um, they're all or nothing weapons. They're going to get you if they want to get you. And you kind of have to just focus on what you know are going to be the meat of the army or the threats of the army. And in this case, in this army, what I see as real threats are the Abomination and those Grey Seers. So I'm just going to do whatever it takes to get to them. And I'll just let his cannons do their thing. And hopefully, if uh, everything plays out the way it usually does against Skaven, they'll do me a favor and blow themselves up. In the magic phase, it looks like I'm going to have a fairly large advantage, but my opponent does a really good job of shutting everything down. The highlights were during the spell Soul Stealer, I was able to kill enough rats to get two wounds back to my sorceress, so now she has five wounds. And then when I cast Blade Wind, I targeted his Grace Tier unit. That forced him to use his Dispel Scroll. And after that, that was pretty much it. There was no shooting. We go straight into combat, and I do a ton of wounds against the slave unit. They, of course, will be steadfast, they will stick, and that will lead us into Skaven turn two. So here we are in Skaven turn two, and I think my opponent was really excited. Things were going his way, and just everything seemed to be going right. And so I think my opponent saw an opportunity to kind of deliver the coup de grace and just kill off my bunker here with both the BSB and the Sorceress. Now, it wasn't terribly long. I think it was a 13, maybe 12-inch uh, distance from there. And so instead of going for the easy uh, charge into my executioners, he tries to go across through the trees into my bunker, uh, and he rolls pitifully low. So <laughs> it was just really, really low. It was really sad. And so this is where his uh, abomination ends up, and we go on to the rest of his movement. Actually, the only movement he has is with these slaves. He moves them up through part of the battle line, and we jump into the magic phase. So he's going to get a bunch of spells off this turn. He's going to start off with Plague. I'm going to stop that because it's really devastating. Uh, he then goes for Vermintide, but that's not very significant, so I let it through. He then goes for Skitter Leap, and he rolls so low, I'm tempted to roll it on one dice, and I do, and I fail, so there you go. And then he casts Death Frenzy on uh, the slaves that are fighting the chariots. Uh, the Warp Lightning and the Vermintide target the Spearman unit. They only kill seven, so it's not game-changing, but it was still... <laughs> That magic phase did get a little out of control. Again, here are going to be a couple clips of different weapons teams opening up and killing maybe three or four models here and there. Not terribly significant. Uh, and like I said, Warp Cannon is going to blow up for you, and it does it again. Uh, finally, we go over to the Engineer. He lets loose the Doom Rocket, and he lands perfectly between these Dread Spears and the Witches and pretty much devastates both of them, and that's... That's pretty much scheming for you. Every time you think you get through the worst of it, they sucker punch you in the stomach. The other War Blinding Cannon actually hits both these chariots but fails to wound. Uh, I think he rolled like a 2 for strength. And then we go into combat. I kill a bunch of slaves uh, with Death Frenzy. He's actually able to put a wound on both of my chariots. Um, I do win this, but of course he's still steadfast. Holds, and we go on to the next turn. So we're going into Dark Elf turn 2, I declare a charge of my Executioners in the Abomination, looking to capitalize on that mistake my opponent made. You can also see I've taken a couple wounds from last shooting phase from the Gunrunners, uh, so I forgot to mention that, just want to point that out now. Also, I'm sure I forgot to mention that my opponent had activated the Storm Banner at some point. Uh, right now, though, it has gone away, and so my dragon's able to make this charge into this large unit of clan rats. When I declare this charge, my opponent elects to stand and shoot, and this brought up a couple problems that I didn't know how to resolve. Uh, luckily, I think my opponent ended up rolling a 2 or a misfire, so it, it did become moot, but there was two things that came up. The first was, my dragon was on the other side of the Warlock Engineer. Can you stand and shoot at my dragon if you're going to hit your own unit? 
Uh, I don't know how the template works. Does the template move forward to hit the dragon, and then if it passes over the Warlock Engineer, it becomes illegitimate? Uh, can you even target that in the first place, or do you just place the template, shoot it forward wherever it lands, and then I, I move my dragon forward, and if I pass over your template, do we resolve it then? Does it matter? I don't know if that's a legitimate thing to do. The other thing was, if he is allowed to do that, do, are you obligated to position the template in such a way that a majority of it is going towards the dragon, or can you kind of just position it in such a way that it'll go over another unit and still be in the way of the dragon? You know what I'm, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but can you basically shoot it off into a direction that would basically be shooting at a different unit, but still technically being in a trajectory that might hit the dragon? <laughs> so I don't know. If you can help me out on any of those questions, luckily it didn't, it didn't need to be resolved in this uh, particular case because I think it was either a misfire or he just rolled a 2 for distance. Uh, but please, if you know, let me know. My magic phase ends up being one of the most successful ones I've ever had in my life. I go with Fury Cane first, he lets it go through on the chariot. I then target Blade Wind on the bunker and I kill 22 of them. I then go for Word of Pain on the Abomination and get minus 3 to his weapon skill strength and initiative. Power of Darkness gets me enough spell dice to cast Soul Stealer, which kills a ton more of the bunker and gets me another 4 wounds for my uh, sorceress. Otherwise, my characters leave the unit and my spearmen start to back up. The Executioners easily defeat the Abomination, but don't kill it and can't catch it. And then finally, the Chariots kill Steadfast, you know. Over to the combat with the Black Dragon, the Dread Lord, and the Giant Block of Skaven. And somehow, the Skaven Champion of the unit is inspired with a level of courage never before seen within the Skaven race. And needless to say, it's short-lived. The first thing we see in turn 3 of the Skaven is the Slaves on the left flank charge into my Executioners. That's really going to bog them down for a couple turns. The Abomination rallies, I believe it's on one wound now. The last clan rat unit that's not engaged is moving backwards to create some space between it and the witches. And then finally we move over to the river where the gutter runners were, and as they move through it, they'll continually uh, activate the net of Amatok. It just keeps on casting that spell on them. <laughs> as we go into the magic phase, there ends up being a large enough disparity between the dice that I'm a little worried about it, especially since I don't have a dispel scroll. Uh, but luckily he fails his first spell, and then when he goes to cast Cloud of Corruption, he ends his magic phase. Uh, but it is Cloud of Corruption, so he does k do a wound to my Black Dragon, kills enough of my Executioners to make it even more worrisome here on the left, and then a Witch dies. So not terrible. In the shooting phase, we have the Warp Fire Thrower do a wound to my Cauldron again. I'm um, getting real lucky there. And then over here we have the Slaves lose combat to the Executioners. And then finally over here I kill off a bunch of uh, clan rats and I do also, more importantly, kill off the BSB. As we look at the board going into Dark Elf turn 3, we can see that my witches are in a pretty awkward position. They're not going to be able to charge any of the three units that are in their vicinity. So I'm going to have to take a chance here. I'm going to charge the Cauldron of Blood at the unit of clan rats that scooted back last turn. As you can see I did not make it, but this also gives me a chance to reform my witches uh, so that they can get into combat in later turns. And in this picture you can see that's what I did exactly. Uh, and then move my uh, characters around to get away from the action but to still be within the lookout sir range of the witches. And finally in the bottom of this picture you can see my Dread Spears are still trying to make their way away from the battle, uh, trying to conserve those points. Now I don't have anything in position to deal with the Hell Pit, but there are some things I can do to mitigate its effect. So I cast Word of Pain on it, I lower its weapon skill initiative and strength by 3. I try to follow up with a good power of darkness but fail. Uh, we go into the combat with the slaves and the executioners. Now that that BSB is dead, I'm able to beat them, and they break, and I, I still have some guys left over. Uh, in the center, we have the black dragon. This is the amount of guys I kill with just the guy on top. The black dragon adds some more. And then uh, on the other side, on the other flank, we have his uh, a slaves break to my chariot. So now both flanks are gone, and I can just start pincering in. And with that, we go into Skaven turn 4, and as you can see here, he moves his Abomination into the flank of my last Executioners. We're going to see his Gutter Runners attempt to move through the river, but the Net of Amatok's going to trigger, and he's going to fail. This leads us into the Skaven turn 4 magic phase, and I'm looking really to just stop a couple spells here. I'm going to let him get off his Augments. I'm going to try to stop his Skitter Leap, which I do, because I don't want his Gracier getting away from me. And then he's going to try for some sort of bomb spell, uh, and that's what I really want to stop. But I don't have to worry about it because he fails to cast it. 
In the shooting phase, his warp lightning cannon shoots through both of my chariots but fails to wound either one of them. The mortar tries to kill the four dread spears that are making their way away from the battle line. It kills three of them, but the last one passes his break check. And then finally, his flamethrower opens up but only manages to kill one witch. Uh, despite the fact that I have the Word of Pain maxed out on this abomination, it is able to kill off the last of the executioners. It was only strength 3, but it generates so many attacks it's able to really kill them off. And I'm unable to do the last wound to it. So, we then move over to the combat with the Black Dragon. Uh, I end up killing quite a few more Skaven. They do break this time now that the uh, BSB is not there and they flee and I choose not to pursue because my goal is to kill the general so I just reform and face them. The best part about winning that combat was the fact that it happened in my opponent's turn so this is really going to help me capitalize here in this round. I have quite a few charges to declare. First the black dragon will charge the bunker. I will follow that up with a cauldron charging the unit I just beat in combat hopefully pushing them away some more and then finally I'm going to try to back up my uh, black dragon with these charges here on the right flank from my chariots into the flank of the uh, bunker unit. Unfortunately, the chariots don't make it into the combat, so the black dragon will have to find it unsupported. Uh, however, the conjure blood does run down the unit that was fleeing. They only rolled the snake eyes when they went to flee, and the chariot easily caught them and got a free reform out of it. So this is how it stands, and we move into the magic phase. In the magic phase, I cast Word of Pain on the Abomination once more to deter it from charging my Cauldron of Blood. I lowered Strength, Weapon, Skill, Initiative by 3. I then cast Blade Win on the Gunrunners, killing quite a few of them. I don't have a shooting phase, so we go straight into combat. I easily kill a champion, and we move into his turn. He, of course, is deterred by that spell from going into the Cauldron of Blood, so he then decides to make a long charge into the Witches, and unfortunately, he makes it. Before I forget, the Warlock Engineer is running around the table still, and we jump into the Magic Phase. Now, when things start going bad for the Skaven, they go real bad, and the Magic Phase is no exception. He just fails to get anything off. In the Shooting Phase, his Warp Fire Thrower blows itself up. The Warp Lightning Cannon it takes aim at these Chariots and fails to do anything because I think it misfires. Uh, however, on a brighter note, it do the Abomination does kill off all the Witches and overruns into the BSB. We move on to the most important place of the board, uh, where we have a clash of the 100 point blades, the Doom Blade, the Fell Blade versus the Hydra Blade. If you ever wondered which blade was you know, better than the other, well I'm going to solve it here right now for you. It turns out that the Fell Blade sucks and the Hydra Blade's the best. So I end up killing the Warlord and uh, still stuck in this combat with a Steadfast unit. Before I go into the uh, charges I made in turn 5, I just want to show you this last survivor of the uh, Dread Spear unit making his way across the board away from danger. Uh, in the charges, I do declare a charge with one of my chariots in the flank here. I make it pretty easily. The other chariot I bring around to face the uh, Warp Lightning Cannon for the last turn. I then also have my Sorceress run away as far as she can away from the Hell Pit. And then I pivot the Cauldron of Blood to face the combat. In the magic phase, all I'm concerned about is trying to keep my BSV alive, so I'm going to cast Word of Pain on the Abomination. I get it off, I only get minus one to its stats, uh, but it actually was enough to save me. So now I, I bump its strength down to uh, strength five, uh, so that gives me a five plus armor save, and I actually make all my armor saves against the very few impact hits he does. Then my Always Strikes First comes into play. I do, an, I do that last wound to him, he falls, and that's where he's laying the template down. Actually, I think he puts it up a little bit further north of me, but as of right now, the template's down, waiting to see what's going to happen. In the combat with the bunker, my black dragon and the chariot just target all the rank and file. I don't want to waste any attacks on the grace here. I just want to knock them under steadfast, break them, and run them down. Uh, I don't do it this turn, but I do knock them down to about two or three ranks. In his Skaven turn, he uh, produces some rat swarms from the dead abomination. They are going to get the revenge. They're going to charge my uh, BSB. In the magic phase, he's going to go for Plague, but I'm still a level 3 with the Book of Asher. Uh, so I, he's not going to be able to get that off as easily, and I do end up stopping it. Uh, in the combat phase, in the shooting phase, I think he tries to shoot the uh, Warp Fire Cannon at my Sorceress, uh, but fails. I think it drifts off or doesn't reach it to her. I, I forget what happens, but it just doesn't hit, connect. Um, and even if it did, she has nine wounds, so she's, she's not going to die in one shot, actually. And then we go to the uh, combat phase, and unfortunately what the Abomination couldn't do, the Rat Swarms do, and the BSB dies. And then at the final combat over here, I do end up killing enough of the rats to where they're not steadfast anymore, they break, and I run them down. 
And with that final combat resolved, we go ahead and just call the game. There's no reason for me to go on with my sixth turn. We add up the points, and it ends up, as you can see here, as a Dark Elf victory. So this was a very fun game. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed the fact that I could bring my Black Dragon to this type of uh, game. I, don't, I usually just reserved it for those larger games if we could fit them in, like the 6,000 point one I had a couple months ago. Uh, but now just to have the freedom to bring it whenever I wish, I think it's great. I really think that the best thing for this game is to reinforce the idea that players can play however they wish to play. And so I think as, as far as these new rules are concerned, the more Games Workshop pushes the game to be structured more in that way, that, that reflection of that mindset, I think the better it is. Now will I bring 50% Lords and Heroes to every game from now on? Definitely not. It's not something that I think is very... Uh, rewarding for me to play with. I think if you and your opponent discuss uh, beforehand that you both expect each other to bring that ahead of time, I think you'll make out for a very good game. It'll be a real close, very uh, nail-biter uh, like game. Uh, however, if, if you guys don't discuss that beforehand, I can see it being very problematic in the sense that uh, you either have the answers for it or you don't. So uh, if your opponent has the answers for your souped up lord, uh, then it's not going to be a very fun game for you in the sense that your guy is going to die in turn one or two and you're going to be at a huge points deficit. Uh, otherwise, the, on the other side of that, you could be going against somebody who's not prepared at all for it and they have no answers for it and you just kind of stomp them all over the place and that's not that's not very fun so I think uh, it's from where I'm coming from it's very key that you uh, you and your opponents have the same expectations uh, and you probably don't want to bring this to your uh, your pickup games unless of course you, your pickup games are with a club who has a culture that knows that this stuff's gonna happen so with that I hope you enjoyed this battle report I do appreciate everyone's likes comments and subscriptions and I'll hopefully have another one by next week. All right, thank you very much. See ya.